this time I want to start, so to say, at the end of the road, namely with the Gestalt prayer. And uh, I would like you to repeat after me the Gestalt prayer, and then I would like some couples and to see what they can do with this sentences. Now the Gestalt prayer goes something like that. I am I, this I am I, and you are you. And you are you. I'm not in this world to live up to your expectations. I'm not in this world to live up to your expectations. And you're not in this world to live up to mine. You're not in this world to live up to mine. I is I. I is I. And you is you. And you is you. Amen. <laughs> So, let's have some couples to see what they can do with this Gestalt prayer. Um, you expect me home every night at 3 o'clock and I'm not going to be there. I don't think I expect that. <laughs> um, I think you do. <laughs> I like to feel I share with you a certain amount. I sometimes feel you're in well, sure. Hmm. I really am trying to be I, and perhaps I don't let you be you enough. The more I try to be I, uh, it doesn't seem to always be enough. It seems I have to be that much more. I never seem to catch up with myself. You're feeling a bit, a bit bad about being yourself and dissatisfied. That's not, that's not my problem. No, I guess I worry then about what you are, perhaps too much. In addition to worrying about where I am. If you're worrying about where I am or what I'm doing. Yeah. Now you see what happened. I gave them a task. And immediately the whole Gestalt approach is thrown out of the window. No more talking about the present experiences. No more talking about what's really happening. Instead of really communicating on the level on which they are, they start the famous mind-fucking game, which finally will end up in the blaming game. <laughs> Let's try again, but at the same time, stay with it now, always tell the other person your reaction, your thoughts, and the simplest way is to think aloud. As a matter of fact, I guarantee each one of you to become a writer within six weeks if they can sit down on the typewriter and write down exactly each word as they think it. It would go like this. Fritz told me I could become a writer in six weeks. I don't believe it. I think it's all rubbish. Now what shall I write now? I don't know. I'm stuck. Nothing comes. To hell with Fritz. <laughs> 
you know, if you exactly and honestly, just at each word, as it appears in your thinking, because thinking is nothing but sub vocal talking. What we usually do in our so-called thinking is we rehearse, we try out, <coughs> and let it go through a sensor, and then let only those sentences out as they are required to manipulate the other person. See, we usually produce sentences to hypnotize the other person, to persuade, to deceive, to convince, very seldom do we speak in order to express ourselves and bring ourselves forward. The result is that all those encounters between human beings usually are sterile. Usually either mind fucking or manipulation. So try again on this basis, you see, on the basis of the expectation thing, and uh, but at the same time I experience now this and so on. And don't rehearse, just bring out a, 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 the therapy situation is a safe emergency situation. You can try out all kinds of things and to realize and realize that the world doesn't fall to pieces if you get angry or if you're honest. And then you go out into the world and you might get some more confidence to do a little bit more honest being in the world and you see that people will appreciate honesty much more than you expect them to. Sure, many people will be offended and peeved, but those are mostly the people who are not worthwhile cultivating as friends. I see that you seem apprehensive when you're clutching at your fingers and searching for something to say. Yeah, um, I, uh, I've noticed that too, that I'm pinching myself, and I've been wondering, well, why am I doing this, fiddling with my hands? Yeah. Now, what a person does on the non-verbal level usually applies to that person which is implicit or explicitly in the thing. If he pinches himself, it means he wants to pinch her. We will do to ourselves what we want to do to others. So pinch her. That was a gentle pinch. <laughs> Maybe I think that there's some truth in that because uh, I was saying to you just before we got up here, you should have uh, told that dream. You you were, I, was, I was being a pusher. It was none of my, and I think it was none of my business what, what you did, because I also have a dream. Yeah. Another most important nonverbal expression is the mask a person is wearing. Now you notice, she is grimacing all the time, and he's always wearing the serious professor face. Talk a bit about, uh, to each other about your faces. What do you see? What do you observe? Well, I like your face, but it's, uh, it does smile a lot. And, uh, and I think it reflects an uneasiness when you're trying to do something to people with your smile. He's interpreting her. Oh, I agree. Uh, and every interpretation, of course, is an interference. You tell the other person what they think, what they feel. They don't let them discover themselves. Well, I think it's quite true. I uh, mask how I feel by smiling. And I don't like to uh, hurt people or maybe be too honest. Uh, I find you look quite steadily and honestly. It's very quizzical. How don't you like to hurt him? Tell 
said, I don't like the lot you buy, so and so. Um, maybe by being honest. Um. Showing that maybe I'm too dependent or uh, wanting something that you're unwilling to get. You see, when she stops grimacing, she can be beautiful. You are beautiful. <laughs> stops the conversation. <laughs> A sentence which I would like to you to use, those are two, let's call it gimmicks for the time being. Two gimmicks I would like you to introduce here. One is, be very honest with where you stand, like, I'm stuck, I don't know what to say now, you embarrass me. It's very simple if you are uh, aware of yourself, then just to make that statement that immediately produces some kind of reaction communication. The other is to translate the famous projection screen it into I or you. It takes all the responsibility. Okay, let's take the next cover. Who was number two? Start also with the Gestalt prayer and then see what you can do with it. You say this to him and you say this to her. I expect you to work. You expect me to work. Mm -hmm. I expect you to be interested in my interest. You expect me to forget mine? <coughs> you notice the smirk that came up in her? Just keep your eyes and ears open. I expect you to be interested in my interests. you to communicate to me, but I don't expect myself to communicate to you right now. It's acting like that. I expect you to have some of the answers and you expect me to have all of them. I expect you to have children. I expect you to be a good mother. I can't see from here whether you're looking at her. Are you? Yeah. See this again and look at her. I expect you to be a good mother. <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to be that. <laughs> I know you expect that. 
expect you to give me a hell of a time in that respect. And I expect that until I stop wanting that. I expect your support in that respect. Now let's work a little bit on this. Put that mother you want, the wife mother, in that chair and talk to her. Uh, I want your support. I want your love. I want your guidance. Okay, now. Be this. Change seats. And give him all he wants. Give him support, guidance, love, cuddling, the tit, eh, the whole works. That's not my role. Say this to him. That's, that's not my role. I'm not supposed to do that. Fake it. At least I expect you to have an image of what you want. What is important is that many people still carry their parents with them and need a mother and so on, even sometimes if they are 50, 60. And they do this in order to maintain their status as a child. It's part of their reluctance to grow up. So, be the mother, give him what he wants. You I don't want know. Him? Okay, change seats. <coughs> Tell the mother how. Tell that, that mother, wife, what you want. Anything. 
so we are probably here in an impasse. In the impasse, you get confused, dumb, uh, go on a merry-go-round, repeating the whole thing all over, try to get out of it, but you're stuck. And the two are really seem to be stuck with their expectations. But once they have established the script, this goes on for ever and ever and ever, if you don't get through the impasse. And this is, let's call it my pride. I think we should start therapy for the first time that we're capable of going through the impasse. If you don't get through the impasse, all you're interested is interest in is to keep the status quo. Whether in therapy, whether you're on inner conflicts, whether in your marriage, all you achieve is retain the status quo. At best, change therapists, change marriage partners, change the nature of the inner conflicts. But the nature of this being torn apart remains. The life script remains unchanged, though the actors might replace each other.